Hello folks, this is the first mini lecture for human relationships and we're going to be talking about the high points of nonverbal communication which is where we left off when we were so rudely interrupted by Mother Nature. So some of the basics to be reminded of include that uh, nonverbal communication serves a number of important f functions, all of which could be trace to evolutionary processes and for purposes of uh, reproduction and getting our genes into the next generation, so matters of survival. But specifically, functions of nonverbal communication include things like expressing emotion so that on the surface of our bodies, nonverbal signals betray our internal emotional states. Um, the second thing is that they uh, allow us to display our individual personality traits because of all, all of our uh, nonverbal signals are idiosyncratic. They are uh, uh, our own ones that we use more than others and we inhibit some and so on. They also are capable, nonverbal signals, of modifying, complementing, or, su or complementing or substituting uh, words that we might use. Um, and of course, you may have already figured out that the more vocabulary you have, the likelihood is that you will rely less on nonverbal signals. Yes, that's also true. Um, they, they display and establish and display power differentials. So social status is marked by a, a set of rules governing distance and uh, height of chairs and the ornateness of an environment and those kinds of things, yes. Um, so the next thing is that they define boundaries between us. So they are modifiers of our comfort levels with closeness, yes. And the last thing which is really most germane to what we study in this course, is that they define relationships. If you get really good at this, as I may have said to you once before in class, you can tell from the distance and closeness and the interplay of the distance between people and the way in which people exhibit certain things facially and throughout the rest of their body, that you can see the way in which people have... Uh, established and maintain a repertoire, a dance, if you will, of their signals. Yes? Okay. So, um, let's see, what's the next thing to talk about? Um, I would say that the next thing to talk about is a reminder, again, of, of what you need to remember when you're deciphering nonverbal signals, and one of those is content. We're talk, we talk about the five C's, something that I developed long time ago. The five C's, context, content, culture, clusters, and changes. And so you'll be reminded of this, yes, that content refers to uh, the language that you need to know about, that, that, that certain signals mean certain things and others don't, that typically a given single uh, signal does not mean everything all the time in all contexts because the context directs what we do and do not exhibit and inhibit. That culture plays a role, both subculture, national culture, um, that we have to think of a variety of signals that may be uh, cross-confirming what we think is occurring in a certain kind of display of nonverbal signals. And, and we want to look at how things change. Because emotions change, we want to see how things occur uh, across time. Yes? So, um, I, I'm trying to think of what else to, to talk about. Um, and, and there are many things, yes? So, we've talked about facial expressions. And we've looked at some of the core emotions of Ekman. Remember that Ekman says there are seven I argued for four. Emery says four. He's the guy that the textbook uh, quotes. And they are uh, happiness, sadness, anger, and anxiety. Yes. And, uh, and so uh, you, you have a number of typical facial features that display each of these emotions. And they are very typical across cultures. So facial expressions, in particular, are consistent 
as Ekman found, you may recall, across cultures. Okay? So go over those, look at the pictures in the, in the detailed PowerPoint for these, yes? Okay, so the next thing I want to talk about is um, uh, um, some of the ways we display openness versus closed sorts of uh, uh, behaviors. Okay, so openness is hands going from across our bodies or blocking our viscera, which are our most important organs, which we must protect because if they're injured, we might not make it. So we want to close things off if we're being in if we're in danger. So when we feel anxiety, we do a lot of self-soothe gestures, what some call self-touch gestures, but we want to we want to hug ourselves and protect ourselves at the same time, as opposed to openness, when we don't feel threatened, we don't feel anxious in particular in a situation, we will open our body language up. By the way, it just occurs to me, I'm looking at the screen, which means when you see this, I'm not looking at you, I'm looking down, so I'm, I'm actually thinking I'm looking at you, but I'll try to make the switch. It's weird. We didn't talk about handshakes, but handshakes um, are easy to... Uh, easy to understand because uh, they represent uh, the ways in which people are either interested or not interested in establishing some kind of power differential in that moment or perhaps even throughout the rest of the relationship. So watch that stuff uh, that I've given you on the PowerPoint. It's very detailed. Um, okay, so um, what else to talk about? Lots of things. Um, so let's talk about uh, lying behaviors. And what I want to tell you about is that the basics of this include that uh, lying behaviors are very difficult to say that one, any one behavior says, ah, that's a lie. That's not how it really goes. Most of what people are doing when they're anxious in a moment, say you're asking them questions and you're trying to see whether they're telling the truth or not, is that no one signal is necessarily and often is not enough to confirm that someone's lying. In fact, this requires a cross-confirming sorts of things. And basically what you're getting are what are called hot spots or places where anxiety has gone up by virtue of the, of the uh, nonverbals that you're seeing on the face or the body. And then you want to ask more about that to see why is this an anxious issue? Why is the person having anxiety? Okay? So someone could be anxious in general. Someone could be shy. Someone could be protective of another person or themselves, but not really lying. See? So we've got to be very careful about that. Again, I provided lots of information on your... Um, on your uh, PowerPoint, okay? Now, the next thing you talk about is flirtation. So flirtation has to do with uh, uh, some behaviors that are innate and are uh, natural, that are provided by genetics. Others are augmented of the augmenting of those. Others are invented. So I have a complete list of those. And males and females differ a little bit one from the other in that regard, okay? Basically, the idea is that males will attempt to show that they are bigger and more powerful and muscular and in charge and in control, and females will, on average, attempt to show uh, things such as uh, the opposite of that, yeah? Uh, and those sorts of things go together. All right. So, uh, I then provide you a long list of photographs, each slide a different photograph or multiple photographs, so that you can see uh, uh, what, you, what, you, what you can in those pictures, okay? And I, I urge you to go through those. Last thing I tell you is don't, remember, don't forget your theme paper due on the deed due date. You're going to submit that to me using email. You're going to submit your paper using email, okay? All right. All right. Don't forget your discussion paper on emotions. That's in the emotions module, okay? All right, folks. Bye-bye.